So imagine for a second that you're going to take a raft trip down a river. Along with slow water and shallows, your map shows that you'll encounter an unavoidable rapid and turns. How do you make sure you can safely cross the rough waters and handle these expected problems as well as any unexpected ones? Well, my first thought is to enlist the support of a more experienced rafter because I have no experience. But it also might be to plan your route and rely on the companion of a trusted friend along the way. Or maybe it's just packing an extra life jacket or considering using a stronger raft than you would have before. But with the right tools in place and support, one thing is for sure, you'll not only make it through the challenges of your river adventure, but you'll also emerge a more confident and courageous rafter at the end of it. So why am I telling you this story? Well, this month, like I said last week, our focus here at Fit for Function for our family is resilience moving on from self-love, which was last month's focus. Now, life may not come with a map, but everyone will experience twists, turns, everyday challenges, but also traumatic events with more of a lasting impact, like the death of a loved one, a life-altering accident, a serious illness or virus maybe. Each has individual factors which changes its effect on the individual. So what might have a traumatic effect on me may not have a traumatic effect on you. But people generally adapt well over time and life-changing situations and stressful situations in part, we all generally adapt to them fairly well. But that's thanks to something called resilience. Resilience is defined as the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or significant sources of stress, such as family relationship problems, serious health problems, or workplace and financial stresses. And as much as resilience involves bouncing back from these difficult situations, I actually feel like it's more important to involve the profound effects of personal growth through going through trials and tribulations. You see, while these adverse events, much like rough river waters, are certainly painful and difficult, they don't have to determine the outcome of your life, and they definitely don't have to determine your mood and emotions. There are many aspects of your life that you can control, modify, and grow with, and that's the role of resilience. Become more resilient sorry, become more resilient and not only will it help you get through those difficult circumstances, but it will also empower you to grow through life and improve and progress no matter what your external situations or what the environment around you may throw at you. So what isn't resilience? Well, being resilient doesn't mean that a person won't experience these trials and tribulations or difficulty and distress. People who suffered major adversity or trauma in their lives commonly experience emotional pain and stress. And in fact, the road to resilience, we encourage those emotional pains and stresses. Because it is through these emotional distresses that we are able to grow, develop, and build resilience. While certain factors might make some individuals resilient, they may just hurt some of us. And so it is so important to find what works individually for you and take each day how you want to take it, not how someone else is taking their day. Resilience involves behaviors, thoughts, and actions that anyone can learn and develop. The ability to learn resilience is one reason research has shown that resilience is ordinary, not extraordinary. One example is the response of many Americans to the September 11, 2001 terrorist attack. An individual's efforts to rebuild their lives after tragedy. You see, they responded to that event, an event of tragedy, 
not with more tragedy, but with the determination and the drive to rebuild their life after that tragedy. Just like building a muscle, increasing your resilience takes time and it takes intentionality. And focusing on four core components of which connection, wellness, healthy thinking and meaning dominate, you too can empower yourself to withstand and learn from difficult trials, traumatic experiences, and the events of everyday life. To increase your capacity for resilience and grow from the difficulties using the strategies that we're going to outline in our individual checking calls this week. I'm not going to give you any general ideas because last week we discussed resilience about what it was and how it affects you. But this week we're gonna focus on what it means for you to be resilient, not just what resilience means. Because over the next two weeks, we're going to take the first steps into building a resilient you, a more determined and driven you. A you that is less focused on what is going on externally, and a you that focus on what they can control and what they can influence. The importance of resilience is not just overcoming trials and tribulations, but the true importance of resilience comes through its ability to allow you to take the steps necessary towards your goals and towards your dreams. Resilience is what sets us apart from the everyday person but it doesn't make you extraordinary. This is an ordinary skill that everyone should learn and everyone should be performing day in, day out. So think about how you could be more resilient and think about what it means for you to be truly resilient. 